for Readable Kraus Titans. Welcome to Special Stage and welcome to the opening round of the 2019 Jordan Road Surfacing BTRDA Rally Championship. The Cambrian Rally always attracts a high profile entry due to the iconic nature of these stages which of course are used in the WRC among plenty of other events. Our reigning champion though Matt Edwards is not back to defend his title but there are a host of other former champions out here to do battle. Not least our 2016 and 17 title holders Charlie Payne and Stephen Petch. There was a fantastic opening ceremony in the town centre in Clandudno. Very spectacular. But of course, it's out here on the stages that the action gets underway. So let's join that action now. Let's go rallying in the BTRDA for 2019. So our 2017 champion Stephen Petch leads the championship cruise away here at the opening round. His sights set on getting that title back this year. Charlie Payne had some problems on a pre-season test, but hopefully things were sorted, ready for a big push here at the opening round. So three of our previous champions top the start list here this weekend. Ewan Thorburn back out in the championship in the newly acquired X-Works Focus World Rally Car, while Niall Henry brings a DS3 R5 over from Ireland to challenge our champions in 2019. Onto the stages then, and Ewan Thorburn and Paul Beaton certainly return with the pace that they're known for, setting some good times to open up a 14-second lead by the end of the first loop. Their closest challenge will be coming from this man, Charlie Payne. Carl Williamson alongside, second at this stage, and managing to open up a similar advantage in that position themselves. Those gremlins from the pre-season test looking like they've been cured for now. Frustratingly, the opening round would not be going to plan for Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson. They spin the car on this corner in the opening stage of the day, but worse was still to come as the pair retire in the next stage with mechanical issues. Niall Henry and Damien Duffin make the trip over the water to be a part of the championship this weekend. And they were not here to make up the numbers. Third place at this stage, 22 seconds back from pain. The NR4 class was always a close fight in the BTRDA, and this weekend would be no different. Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence taking advantage this time round with an eight second lead in the class after the opening loop of stages. Their long time rivals in the class, Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy, would be second place at this stage. Russ not feeling too great himself in the car this weekend, so it will be taking a lot of effort to stay on the pace. The B13 class is another that always sees a good fight. And leading the way there were Ian Bainbridge and Daniel May, the Subaru pair with a 14 second lead in the class. Steve Simpson and Mark Glenister make a good start to the day in the S2000 Fiesta. A little smoke coming from the car at times, but not seeming to be causing any issues. Seventh place for now. Richard Sykes and Simon Taylor are back in four-wheel drive again this season. Back out in the Evo and the B13 class. They take second place at this point in the event. And for Scott Faulkner and Gareth Parry, it will be third in the NR4 class. A little way back from the fight up ahead, but happy in that position. Rounding out our top 10 leaderboard were Richard Hill and Patrick Cooper. The Subaru pair also taking third in the B13 class at this stage as well. Sadly, we'd lose Ian Joel and Graham Wood from the fight. The escort looking as good as ever out in the stages, but the pair would hit a culvert on the second stage of the day. They did look to get away with it, but the damage would cause them to retire eventually. And it was also a short-lived rally for Matthew Hurst and Declan Deer. Alternator issues sidelining them on stage one. Brian Bell and Paul Spooner bring out a new R5 for this season. Frustratingly though, the learning curve would prove problematic this time out. They end the event in the stage two ditch. Sam Billum and Graham Wilde come into this season with a drive in an R5 car, thanks to Pete Smith and Greenlight. Sadly, it wouldn't go to plan though, retiring on the second stage of the day with water loss. The speed of the R5 proving a little hard to get used to in the opening stage of the day as well, as this overshoot proves.
So with the morning complete, the results in the Gold Star are looking like this. On we go to the afternoon stages then here at the Cambrian and it will be a third place in class finish for Richard Sykes and Simon Taylor. They round out the top 10 finishers overall as well. Time lost for the pair down to a puncture in stage five. That slip down the results for Sykes would benefit Richard Hill and Patrick Cooper. The Subaru pair ending the rally with second place in B13. Those issues for Sykes also playing into the hands of Scott Faulkner and Gareth Parry too. They take eighth place overall at the end of the rally, remaining in that third place in the NR4 class as well. For Russ Thompson and Andy Murphy, things didn't really get any better. They salvage a good result though out of the day with second in the class, seventh overall. It was a good finish though for Steve Simpson and Mark Glenister, which would see them taking sixth place to end the rally. That smoke from the car not seeming to have been an issue whatsoever this weekend. There's no change in the B13 class for Ian Bainbridge and Daniel May. The pair taking the class win at the opening round. A great end to the day and a great start to their championship campaign. And despite a few moments along the way, it would be the NR4 victory for Pat Naylor and Ian Lawrence. The best way to start their season, finishing just outside the podium places overall with fourth. On to those podium positions then, and there wouldn't be much change. Niall Henry and Damien Duffin continuing their good run to end the day with that final step on the podium. For Charlie Payne and Carl Williamson, it would be second place. Just missing out on victory by 3.3 seconds at the end of the rally. Close battles once again throughout the seven stages today in the BTRDA rally series. Part of the reason for things being so close to end the day would be problems for Ewan Thorburn and Paul Beaton. They dropped time in the final stages of the day, just managing to cling on to that lead to take victory here at round one. Confirmation then of the overall results here at the first round of the championship, the Cambrian. A great win for Thorburn, setting him and Paul Beaton up nicely for the championship, which heads north to the Malcolm Wilson rally for round two. You and a bit of anticipation on social media this week about you returning to the BCRDA and in that car as well, and you've come here out of the box, and even though you had a problem, you've done the business. Yeah, it's, it's uh, quite, a, quite a long time out of the seat for us, to be honest, so it was good to get back, and uh, stages down here are always really good. So Daddy yeah. duties come first, Ewan. Yeah, enjoyed it. What's wrong? <laughs> Go give it to Grandpa. Oh dear, you're going to have to charge that for him. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, great day with you back in the car, and that car is something completely different, and it's good to have something different out there. Yeah, it's it. Obviously, I had the R5 before, but we wanted something different, so we went for one of those, and uh, yeah, it's obviously a good car. It was driving me at times today, I wasn't driving it, but yeah, it's good to, good to get back into it, and uh, picked up fairly quickly, I think, but obviously I had the problems in the end, so... Yeah, but it's looking good, looking good for the Malcolm Wilson anyway. So. Yeah, we know you're going to go and do round two. Depending on how that goes, could we see a full championship yeah, yeah, challenge? Yeah. yeah, hopefully, as long as round two goes okay, then we'll, we'll keep going. But yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. Congratulations, winner at round one. Thank you, cheers. Previous Gold Star champion Hugh Hunter brings an escort out for his home event leading the Silver Star cruise away from the start with a whole host of returning challengers looking to make sure that Hunter doesn't have it easy this weekend. On to the opening stages then, and nobody would be surprised if you said our Silver Star champion would be leading the way. But this weekend would see George Lepley and Arwell Jenkins out for the first time in a historic spec Avenger thanks to Baz Jordan. So that lead of the event was certainly a great achievement for the pair. For Hugh Hunter and Rob Fagg, it would also be their first time out in the car. And things were going well, that said, second place at this stage, but they didn't have much of a comfort margin in that position. That's because they'd be chased down on the results by Owen McMacken and Lee Taylor. A challenger for the lead in the category on many occasions in the past as well. Two seconds back from Hunter at this point in the rally. After a successful season on the asphalt, Ed Fossey and Will Rutherford return to gravel and take on the R2 class in the BTRDA this weekend. And things were going well so far, leading the class in fourth place overall. 2018 had been Damien Pratt's and Johnny Tad Evans' first season and it had been a good one. 
The pair returned to try and improve on that pace, ending the morning with fifth place on the overall Silver Star leaderboard, second in the B12 class behind McMacken. A puncture in stage three wouldn't be helping their overall times though. Tom Llewellyn and Ross Whittock joined the historic class here on the Cambrian, and despite limited outings, things were going well. Second in H3, sixth overall. And it would be back to the escort again this season for Alan McDowell and Gavin Hesseltine. They start the day well with seventh place in the Silver Star, third in B12. A new car for Perry Gardner and Keaton Williams this season would see them step up to the R2 class. Perry's dad, Sean, of course, a former BTRDA champion. They were showing that they had the pace as well, ending the morning with eighth place overall, second in R2. Bobby Mitchell and Shannon Turnbull, meanwhile, lead the way in the N3 class. And of course, in the Fiesta ST Trophy. Ninth place overall, the pair enjoying a good start to their season in that distinctive looking car. And rounding out the top 10 with Tommy Meadows and Emma Morrison, themselves leaving the old car sidelined in place of an R2 Fiesta this weekend. We would sadly lose championship sponsor Baz Jordan, Paul Wakeley in with him for this event in stage two when they crash out of the rally unluckily rolling the car off the edge of the road after going wide and clipping a culvert. And we'd also lose Andy Davison and Tom Murphy from the fight, the steering failing, causing them to go off the road and putting an end to their rally. In some of the classes outside the top 10 then, it will be second in N3 for Zach Hughes and Tom Wood, 11th place in the category. For Tony Williams and Steve Pugh, it would be the lead in the B11 class. There'd only be a minute separating the top half of the results. For David Gathercole and Ken Bills, it would be 18th overall. The pair had been out on the Riponian stages the weekend before, so a long week of getting the car prepared for this round was paying off. For Rob Wright and Terry Malin, it would be second in B11. The pair lying in 20th on the leaderboard in the category at this stage too. And joining the ST Trophy this weekend were Will Corey and Brynmore Pierce. Third in the N3 class for the pair at this stage, 21st overall. Bit of pressure as well for Will, given that Brynmore owns the car. Things were not going to plan meanwhile for Jeff Phelps and Pete Wilson. They end the morning with third in B11, but a puncture in the second stage of the day would be causing all kinds of problems and the pair would eventually retire back in service. Just the one car entered in the B10 class this weekend. Damien Thomas and Paul Bevan, of course, then taking the lead in the class. So we're midway through the day here at the Cambry and the results in the Silver Star category here in the BTRDA look like this. On to the afternoon stages then, and there'd be no change for Damien Thomas and Paul Bevan hanging on to take the B10 victory this weekend in 25th overall. No change in the B11 class for Rob Wright and Terry Malin. They end the rally with second in B11, 21st on the leaderboard. And for Tony Williams and Steve Pugh, it would be the B11 class victory. They managed to hold on to that lead by just over a second by the finish. Not helped with this wrong way moment in stage five. Thankfully, only losing a handful of seconds, getting things going the right way again. But the result could have been very different. There'd be no change, meanwhile, in the N3 class for Will Corey and Brynmore Pierce. Third place in the class would be theirs at the end of the rally. The lead in that class would dramatically be lost through stage five for Bobby Mitchell and Shannon Turnbull. They go into the stage with a puncture and pick up another along the way. The Fiesta driving very much like a Mark II Escort by the end of the stage. They finish with second in the class, not bad given those problems. It will be a strong end to the rally for David Gathercole and Ken Bills as well. They take second in the class as well as 14th overall, their best result to date. On we go then to the top 10 leaderboard and it would be Tommy Meadows and Emma Morrison rounding out the top 10 at the end of the rally taking third in the R2 Cup this weekend. 
With those problems for Bobby Mitchell, it will be a welcomed victory in the end three class and fiestas for Zach Hughes and Tom Wood. Getting to the end of the rally with the car still in the same condition, it left the start line. For Alan McDowell and Gavin Heseltine, it will be a podium finish in the B12 class. Sadly, the wrong end of the podium though, they end the rally with third in the class, eighth on the leaderboard. Ed Fossey and Will Rutherford would miss out on the R2 Cup victory this weekend after a fantastic performance all day. They were pipped to the win on this occasion and have to settle for second. So looking like we're going to get good value from the fight in this R2 class this season. Taking victory after a close fight would be Perry Gardner and Keaton Williams. That step up to the R2 Cup clearly going well for Gardner as he takes the maximum points here at the opening round. Tom Llewellyn and Ross Whittock would be one of a handful of historic crews filling out the top of the Silver Star leaderboard. They take fifth place, second in H3 this weekend. Despite trying everything, there'd be no holding on to that podium place from the morning for Owen McMackin and Lee Taylor. Not only do they lose that position, they also lose their exhaust. They do settle for fourth place overall, taking second in the B12 class in the process. Meanwhile, it would be a great debut in the Escort for Hugh Hunter and Rob Fagg. The switch to two-wheel drive clearly not slowing the North Wales driver down. Hugh saying he had a lot of fun, but it was, as you'd expect, just a little bit different to four-wheel drive. And he'll be back on the asphalt in the World Rally Car very soon. They take the final step on the podium, as well as the H3 class victory. Damien Pratz and Johnny Tad Evans come back from their earlier puncture and work their way up the leaderboard to end the day with second place in the Silver Star category. A great way to kickstart their season. But the drive of the day has to go to George Lepley and Arwell Jenkins, jumping into the unfamiliar car and managing to take the Silver Star victory by almost 40 seconds in that historic Avenger. So confirmation then of the results here on the Cambrian Rally in the BTRDA Silver Star category. The 1400 category will be back to running ahead of the field on this weekend's rally, giving the crews plenty of loose gravel to slide the cars around on. And it would be an early lead for our current champion, Dave Brick, with Toby Brick alongside. Just behind the courser at this stage in the expected battle, I suppose you could say, for the 1400s would be Chris Powell and Jim Lewis. The Sunbeam pair back to make sure Brick doesn't have an easy time of it five seconds, the difference between the two cars now. A new face for the top of our 1400s. It will be a good start to the rally for Steve Black and Paul Morris. The pair a little way off that fight up ahead. There was still a long way to go and anything could change, of course. Heffin Lloyd Davies and Rich Jones make a great start to the rally to take fourth place overall in the 1400s. Frustratingly for them, that wasn't to last. They retire soon afterwards with alternator problems. And a slightly cautious start to the day would see Pete Gorst and Philip King sitting a little further down the leaderboard than they would have wanted. A push on the remaining stages of the morning would see them salvage fifth place going into service. For Noel Lappin and Ian Jones, it would be sixth. The escort pair just over half a minute back from Gorst up ahead. A wider kick car shaped micro would be the weapon of choice this season for Dominic Hodge and Stefan Arndt. The car looking good, they end the morning with seventh place overall in the 1400 category. Hodge's lead in that place would be a comfortable one as well, with Matthew and Daniel Evans just behind on the overall times. A minute's gap as well, the pair also leading the way in 1400C though. For Jane Auden Rowe and Chris Rowe, it will be ninth. The MG pair just inside the top 10 leaderboard and only 1.4 seconds back from Evans. And rounding out our top 10 at this stage were Richard Garnett and Rob Gillam the second of the Wide Arch Micras out on the stages this weekend and still looking fantastic out here, aren't they? 
Sadly, after the highly anticipated return to the series, we'd lose Kieran Darrington and Abby Haycock, the engine in the Corsa giving up on the second stage of the day. Just the one crew in Rally First this weekend, but with the 1400s running ahead of the field, we're surely going to see that boosted throughout the season. This means Joseph Keane and Paul Barbett only have to finish to take victory. So we're midway through the day in the 1400s and the results so far are shaping up like this. On to the second half of the rally then for the 1400 category and there'd be no change for Joseph Keane and Paul Barbett. They only had to finish for that result. Easier said than done of course, especially with some stages being used twice, but they do get to the finish and take that rally first victory. Retirements up ahead would mean some places gained for a handful of crews and for Richard Garnett and Rob Gillam that meant ninth place to end the rally. For Jane Auden Rowe and Chris Rowe it would be eighth, a good end to the event for the MG pairing. The times would still be close, the MG pair just seven seconds back from Matthew and Daniel Evans, taking that seventh place overall as well as the 1400 C class win. And a good end to the rally would see Dominic Hodge and Stefan Arndt taking sixth place overall in that wide arch micro. Over two minutes of an advantage in that position as well by the end of the rally, showing their pace. Noel Lappin and Ian Jones would enjoy a good finish in the escort. They end the rally with fifth in the 1400s back at the finish in Slamdidno. And things would get better for Pete Gorst and Philip King. They pick up the pace through the afternoon to move up to fourth. A few moments along the way would give them a scare or two, but they reach the end of the rally in one piece. On to the podium places then, and it would be the final step on our 1400 podium here at round one for Steve Black and Paul Morris. A great start to the season for the Suzuki pair. There was no holding on to the lead though for Dave and Toby Brick. A puncture wouldn't help their times, and when the battle was as close as it is at the top of the 1400s, there really is no room for error or punches, the pair having to settle for second place here at the first round. But that, of course, means that it's victory for Chris Powell and Jim Lewis. A good start to the season, and one that will give them plenty of confidence going into the second round of the series in the Lake District in a few weeks' time. So confirmation then of the final